food nerds. I want you for the food nerd army. Uh, those of us who don't work in the restaurant industry tend to think of ourselves simply as diners. But if we want to be a positive influence on our restaurant scene, and we can, we have to think of ourselves less as diners and more as foot soldiers. Uh, I enlisted about seven years ago at a place called LTH Forum back in Chicago, where I'm still a moderator, and also at a group called Charm City Hounds in Baltimore. And these folks were after good food. Yeah, absolutely. But even more importantly, they were dedicated to finding the best their cities had to offer and then getting out there and spreading the word. Um, when I first moved to Phoenix a couple years ago, a friend here asked me if I thought that Phoenix or Baltimore had a better restaurant scene. I said, well, you know, there's a whole lot more to work with here, but frankly, I kind of feel like the guys back in Baltimore got more out of what they had because, man, they were organized and they were relentless. And I told him the story of Grace Garden. Um, there was a running gag back in Baltimore that the Chinese food there was terrible. I mean, it was all Americanized, it was all cheap, it was greasy, it was awful. A good traditional Chinese restaurant was the holy grail for the food nerds in Baltimore. And then we found it. There was this chow hound thread called, is there any good Chinese food in Baltimore? There was a whole bunch of people basically agreeing that, no, there wasn't. But one day, this one fellow posted his first post. And he said, hey, you guys got to come down and check out this place called Grace Garden. And he described these dishes. And they really sounded like the real deal. So we got down there as quick as we could. Um, it was about 20 minutes south of the city in this dingy strip mall. And it was surrounded by a coin-op laundry, a liquor store, a tattoo parlor, and a chicken wing takeout joint called Cluck You. And, <laughs> and they were basically subsisting by selling egg rolls and General Cho's chicken to the soldiers at Fort Meade across the street. But there was a second menu, and the second menu was filled with these Sichuan and these Cantonese specialties, and the food was amazing. And the only thing better than the food was the fact that the people who ran this place were the sweetest in the world. May waited tables, and her husband, Chun, was in the back running the kitchen single-handedly. And we were completely blown away by this place, and we decided we have to get the word out. So we worked as a team. Some of us organized outings to get some buzz going. Some of us posted on Chow Hound. I wrote on my blog. I posted another community food board down in DC. One guy emailed all the food critics he could find, and we just kept it up. We refused to let the buzz die. And within a few months, finally, it broke. The Baltimore Sun, the Baltimore City Paper, and the Washington Post all wrote these glowing pieces about this little restaurant. And they talked about how the food nerds were integral in getting the word out. So almost overnight, after operating for three years in almost total obscurity, these guys were packed. And the only thing better than seeing this place packed was seeing Chun and May levitating like three inches off the ground, just beaming because people were coming for their food, and not just because they were the Chinese takeout joint that happened to be across the street. That is the power of an organized food nerd army. And this, this is how you do it. First, enlist. It's all about community. It is all about community. It's when people get together that the good stuff starts to happen. And I'm not talking about certain websites that shall remain unnamed. A database full of opinions is not a community. This is a community. So get together and talk to each other and get out and eat with each other. The only thing better than eating in a fabulous restaurant is doing it with a whole crowd of people who are just as obsessed about it as you are. And when that obsession is shared, that's when the amazing stuff starts to happen. There is strength and there is energy in numbers. Next, you got to train. So you got a crowd of food nerds, use them. Talk to each other and listen to each other and learn from each other. Those websites, unfortunately, are more focused on output than they are on discussion. And let's do something about that, by the way. Come talk to me. But you know, use what you've got. Do what you can to discuss as much as possible. Also, read a book, get online, do a little research. All opinions are equally valid, but not all opinions are equally informed. And the more informed you are, the more authoritative you can be when you're trying to spread the word. Next, deploy. There are restaurants out there that are in fabulous places, and they have huge PR budgets, and they have big name chefs, and some of them are completely awesome, and they deserve all the support they get. But man, there are still so many places that are just languishing in obscurity because people don't want to drive an extra 10 minutes, or because they're hidden in a strip mall next to Cluck U. <laughs> you know, you got to get boots on the ground and pound the pavement. I'm currently working my way down McDowell from 62nd, 52nd Street down to Central, stopping at every restaurant along the way. And I realize not everybody has enough screws loose to commit to that kind of thing. But the point is that if a whole lot of people dig just a little bit, then collectively we can cover a ton of ground. And then finally, fight. Get the word out. Do whatever you have to do to do it. And you can't be afraid to criticize mediocrity when you see it. But even more importantly, when you find people who are doing it right, man, you've got to scream it from the rooftops. And if you get frustrated that the mainstream isn't supporting the good stuff, then you have to force the good stuff into the mainstream. Mainstream. And you have to be relentless because, unfortunately, sometimes getting something into the general dining population's brain means, you know, beating it into them. So I realize that to a large extent I might be preaching to the choir here, but I feel like even among the hardcore food nerds, there's still this tendency to kind of sit on the sidelines and work within these little bubbles. And, you know, Phoenix's Grace Gardens are out there. And even a small group of people who are dedicated to it can be the difference between whether they quietly go out of business or whether they survive and they thrive and they have a real impact on our scene. 
And it isn't good enough just to sit back and hope the good food comes to us. We have to get together. We have to learn from each other. We have to find the good stuff. And then we have to get out there and fight for it. We've got to get organized. We've got to get militant, get mad, get a fork, go jump in a foxhole, join the Food Nerd Army. <laughs> <laughs>